one day at uh, when we were still back at Gulf and Western, these 14 companies were losers. Um, 12 of them we'd never even seen the presidents of. They were like hallucinations somebody had come up with on a peyote trip or something like that. They really didn't exist. Plus, our president, our president's son was dying of cancer, which means he was dying of leukemia, which means our president would come into the office at 9 o'clock every day, walk into his office, lock the huge wooden doors to his executive suite, and we wouldn't see him. We wouldn't see him at all. There was no direction to the company whatsoever. Um, well, one day, and I spotted two companies in this batch of losers that were brilliant, that have wonderful, wonderful teams, and I put all my time into those two companies. One was Sire Records, Seymour Stein's company, and the other was Dot Records, which was number three in the country in Western business and wanted to be number one and was very, very committed to achieving that goal. So... But one day, the A&R guy, A&R is artist and repertoire, it means the talent scouter, the talent scout for Paramount Records, one of our really losing labels, walked into the off, my office and said, I got this new star, she's a 13-year-old girl from Crown Heights, Brooklyn, she's the greatest singer you've ever seen in your life, she's going to be a gorilla, she's going to be a smash, yada, 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 yada was a phrase he used all the time. And yes, I'd heard about lots of gorillas and smashes from him, and none of them had gone anywhere. So I had zero confidence in this and was going to pay it no attention until he said, and I've got her doing a showcase tomorrow at the Plaza Hotel. Now look, I'm in a 23rd story office overlooking the park at Columbus Circle, right? And the Plaza Hotel is a five-minute, extraordinarily pleasant walk away. And I'm in charge of the artist relations department, which means I'm, my job is to show artists we care about them. Although I'm rather blunt in the job. If an artist is not going to get any attention from the company, I tend to tell them that. Nonetheless, um, there's no way in hell I can get out of a five-minute walk to a showcase at the Plaza Hotel. So I go over to the showcase room, and it's a nightclub with these tiered um, platforms for the tables so that everybody can see. It's like a little amphitheater. And I'm sitting at my little amphitheater seat, and all of a sudden, this squashed-looking little black woman comes out on stage, looking almost like a pygmy. And the minute she comes out, you have the feeling that she has grabbed you by the trachea and put her nose up to yours and has her eyes lighting your eyes up, and you are there to sit and obey, period. She was amazing. You've never seen anything like it in your life. So I went back to my office and changed my priorities. And in addition to Sire Records and Dot Records, my new priority was Stephanie Mills. And the next day, because our company was running on autopilot, a coup had been pulled within Gulf and Western. Another one of Gulf and Western's companies was Paramount Pictures. And Paramount Pictures was doing very well. And it was doing very well under the guidance of a man who was the Napoleon of the film industry. His name was Frank Yablons. And he had a reputation that really preceded him. You do not mess with Frank Yablons. Well, all of a sudden, the next day, we were told that we were due at 10 o'clock for a staff meeting. Well, guess what? We'd never had a staff meeting meeting before. Never. In fact, we had never seen the conference room lit. It had always been this dark room in which people put stray things on the table. Chairs, other tables, anything that, you know, was getting in the way. So we arrived at the conference room, and it was lit to our surprise, and the table was dusted to our surprise, and there were agendas in front of us. Agendas listing 25 records we'd never heard of before in our lives. The president, our president, who was six foot two, took his place at the head of the table and began to speak. But then all of a sudden, behind us, at the door, we felt a presence. And it was as if, it was as if Napoleon had walked in surrounded by all of his troops and a full score orchestra and shots of thunderbolts and storm clouds. And in walked this five foot four inch guy who we only saw out of the corner of our eye. And as he walked down the length of the table, 
our president began to shrink. And he got lower and lower and lower and lower in his seat until you could barely see his head above the table. And then when Frank Yablons reached his position, he slid out of his chair like a jellyfish and slid into the chair next to it. And Frank Yablons took over the head of the table.